In today's work in progress video, I continue with part two of my collaboration with Crazy Gamer Models, where we are doing a resin to plastic challenge. Uh, for mine, I am doing Commander Dante from the Blood Angels. So, this picture that I got and I was able to get from Games Workshop really wasn't doing it for me. So I went out and I got the actual guy. So we can take a look at him and see what he looks like. Get a nice up close view of him. See what kind of things we are going for, what we're trying to replicate. And everything right now is just a dry fit. So I can look under here and see everything. So we can take a better look at his shoulder pad right there. And especially this one right there. And in his artwork, he has the blood drops, if I remember right, right there. But the main thing that uh, I needed to get from that is that he has that uh, banner with his name on it. So we can, that one is actually attached. And then his hand and gun is separate. And then this is another key feature. So we want to try to replicate that hose and then that, I guess, ammo barrel, energy barrel. I don't know what that is, but that we want to try to replicate. And then with on him, something else that I noticed by actually having the model up close, he has those little Icarus wings. And then of course he has the grenade, the gun, and now that I take a closer look at it, it does actually have the gun in that holster. So maybe the one I got will be correct. So first I was thinking it, it was for, you know, the gun he's carrying, which really doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I would need to get an unholstered or a, a, a gunless holster. So what I have might work. And then he has a couple little uh, pouches over there. And then of course, uh, lots of, uh, lots of guys. So that's him. That's who we want. And then of course his face. So this is what I have been going through. This is where I am currently at. And if you have seen Crazy Gamers Part 1, which I highly recommend, if you haven't, I will definitely be putting the link here um, to it and his Part 2 when he comes up with it. Um, he talks about how with his Tech Priest, he is going to have that guy riding on a set of tracks. And oh my gosh, thank you for calling me out. Now I got to kick this guy up a notch. So rather than just having him step, I am going to have him be kind of like stepping on the head of something. This is one of the bigger heads that I currently had uh, just within my bits. Um, but I have gotten with one of the guys at my local uh, Games Workshop store. And this week I'm going to be meeting him up and getting one of the large heads um, for my Tyranid. So that'll work as if this is kind of like a, also a little diorama kind of a thing going for the uh, Battle of Bale, I believe, um, where he where he fought the Tyranids, um, I believe it was Tyranids, and uh, so it'll be I'll, I'll I'll use that head instead. But this is a great substitute until then. So let's go ahead and take a look at my process, how I. Um, work with these guys, uh, how I uh, a kit bash and recreate a figure. Um, my first thing that I do is I use this stuff galore. I love this stuff. Um, I think it was originally by 3M and it was blue, so a lot of people just call, still call this blue tack. Um, but what I always pretty much always get is gray. But uh, So I use the blue tack because while I'm doing this, I go through a lot of options. I, I, I say, well, what works best? What looks the best for me? So I'm going to want to be able to change things out and take a look at it. 
So that's exactly what I've done with here and everything's blue tack. So let's also go ahead and show you where everything's coming from in case you wanna follow along and do the same recreation. First off, I will show I got this, which is the Primaris Blood Angels upgrade kit. And I can just go ahead and show you this. It is a pretty nice little upgrade kit. And I will tell you how ridiculous I have gotten within this. There, that side one, the opposite side. I got this kit solely for the shoulder pad because I am planning on putting this in my mold, um, which I'm still kind of working on. I've stolen some ideas from Crazy Gamer um, where I am working on a new molding material, uh, which is basically about half and half milliput and green stuff, and uh, which I'm still playing with, haven't gotten 100% on. Um, and once I have that, I'm gonna go on um, and try to mold. And the reason I wanna mold this shoulder pad is because I want to try to take that emblem off so I can, I'm here, there we go. So I can stick it right there and one on each side because on the actual Dante's one, see, he has those right there on his. So that's what I'm trying to, to reproduce on mine. And I liked this one. It looked like the, um, you know, the curve of it looked the best. Uh, it just looked to, to fit the theme um, here with on the shoulder pad. So that's what I wanted. And speaking of molds, I also thought I would show you my molding kit that I have come up with. Um, I just have a whole bunch of Legos from my collection. And these right here are so I can make different size, so I can make different size molds, so I have different plates. And then I have different little parts in here so I can make it bigger or smaller or whatever that I might need. But I've come up with this, which is just a little molding box. And it fits in, I just need to get, pull out some one by one. So instead of having plates here, so it'll even stick even better. But you just put in your blue stuff, um, which is a reusable molding material. Uh, just take that, put it in some hot water to um, soften it up, put that in there, um, get it in there, put in, you know, put in your piece that you wanna mold, then put four little dots usually with like a skewer or something let that sit then get some more of the blue stuff put that in on top and then i will shut it tight clamp it uh, a lot of times i don't this usually stays pretty good but i do have some clamps that i can go and that just keeps me from having you know being at a good spot um and i got you know four of these so i can put one on each side if i need to and so that is how that is my mold box um, once you've, once the mold has set, I can then take it out of here and then reuse the mold box and just keep the mold set separately. Uh, something that additional that I stole from crazy gamer is he has also then taken some plastic card and made a plastic card size shape for his mold. And then, so then once he takes it out of his mold box, he then can use that to clamp, um, because the clamps really won't clamp down on the blue stuff, but once you've given it a little bit of a uh, uh, rigidity from you know that that uh, plastic card, then it works good. Um, so I'll probably cut me some of those as well, um, so that way I can mold box it once and then take it out and keep molding. So that's my molding. Next, I have this guy, which is the regular uh, Blood Angels uh, upgrade kit here that is and i want it for the this head because i want to try to you know again mold that down and then see if i can't pull out that laurel and then use that on uh you know place that on my current head um the other things that i pulled out from here let's pull it out let's pull off dante Let's take a look at him is this guy right here 
which is supposed to be a topper for a backpack. Um, but I'll just cut off that end knob and cut off because there's a big, you know, a bulge for the head, for the skull there. Cut that off so it fits flush on Dante. So he has a nice big oversized buckle. So I got that from that kit. And then, of course, I got his head, which has that iron halo already built in. Um, but I might give him a second one. The model itself doesn't have it. It's one is like that. So I'll I might leave it like here. To me, it's a little more hard to, to tell just right off the glance. It's got that iron halo. Um, but it does uh, work really well with the, um, the actual model. Now, with the actual model, you can kind of see in here that there's gaps uh, within his iron halo. With the actual model, it's just one solid piece there. So I might pull out my Vallejo uh, plastic putty and see about possibly filling those in there so I have that one um, solid piece. But other than that, this head actually works really great. Um, I wish the mouth was open because Dante is always screaming and he has talked about that, how he is in a war scream. Uh, you know, his, his, his uh, death mask is purposely done like that. Um, but it's, I've, I've had a hard time trying to find that open mouth version. But I think all in all, especially at a distance, that works really, really well. The final part that I got from the upgrade kit is the body. And again, it's kind of like that singular guard body where you can see the abs, but then it has that, uh, that center little piece kind of like Dante has. So that works really well. And then the back is just a back from the singular guard um, kit, but almost any back to really work. So as long as uh, it's primary, as long as any of those backs, they're, they're pretty much any will work. So that is what I got from that upgrade sprue. Next is the guard set, which most things are coming from there. Um, I have the gun. Here we go, here's his gun. And again, this is kind of why I blue tack everything because with this gun, you have different hand options. Let me see. So I have the option to doing a closed fist or kind of an open fist pointing. I kind of look like the look of that closed fist, but I'm going to really take a look at both of them. I'll try to get an idea of which one I, you know, I'm going to end up going with, but it's probably going to be that closed fist um, because here on the actual model, it is a gun that he is holding. So his fist is, you know, closed because it is a gun, not uh, a gun attached to his armor. But I th think it still plays well um, with what I'm going for here. So I'm okay with that. The one thing that I am looking to do is, see, it's missing that energy coil or ammo coil or whatever it is. And then, of course, the tube. So the tube I will green stuff um, and make a little tube. And to get that coil, I found this at my GW uh, store in the bits box. And I wanted it simply for that coil. Now this mine is gonna be much bigger than the models, but I'm okay with that. Um, when you're kit bashing stuff, when you're making your own, uh, sometimes, you know, oversized is really nice. And that amazingly, let me pull it, pull my sheet around, uh, was the uh, heavy arc rifle. It's part of the heavy arc rifle for the breacher. So, which is amazingly is the um, kit that he is pulling that track from. Um, so if you want to do the same thing, that's where you would get this bit from. And then, of course, I have other little bits um, that just come from just a variety of sources uh, for pouches and everything. While well, I'm trying to decide which one I'm doing. Um, and that right there was a potential uh, 
a buckle, but it was definitely way too big. I wound up liking the one that I got from that upgrade kit. So then I have the shoulder pad that I got from the guard set, and that one looks works really well. It fits. It fits with the jump pack, um, and it looks like the one for Dante. So that works really well. The other shoulder pad, again, is from that guard set. And it has the molded blood drops. So I like that even better. But then it does have that banner to put his name in. So it is perfect. It does have that extra little blood bit right there. But that is okay. Then I have my axe. I have the legs. Now this is another one that I've been kind of torn back and forth on because from the kit, I have two different options. And this one I like because it's got the plain, um, the, the more plain legs kind of like Dante has. Um, but this one, it's at the, the correct standing position. Um, so it's immediately a little more recognizable as, you know, that Dante ripoff. And it has the wings, you know, on the legs. Um, so they're not really that Icarus-like wings, but I think it plays well um, with it. But I'm still kind of looking at this one and possibly changing, um, you know, his, uh, his stance. And then I would need to mold those Icarus wings. So I'm still trying to decide which pair of legs I like the best. And then, cause then I pulled out from that kit two other possible um, uh, shoulder pad options. Um, and not a different wing set, but again, Dante has the ones where the wings are out, not in. And then uh, his has the, the single blood drop. If I remember right, I'm gonna go back and look at um, look at some of that lower, look at some of the pictures, see if I need to use the three drop or the one drop. But so I have those. Uh, again, this head is just, um, you know, a temp head that I'm using. Uh, so, so, but he is going to end up being some kind of uh, other one. And then here, now the gun this gun is facing the opposite way, so it's going to be on his uh, opposite side, but that is okay. That's not a major uh, change. I'm okay with that, but I might try to get a different gun um, for his other side. And then for the, the pouch and the uh, grenade, I have that for that opposite side now, um, so that works. Finally, I have the jump pack, which is just a GW jump pack, Whoa. which is just a GW jump pack, which again, I'm going to mold uh, those, uh, those little wings for that side. But so there he is. That is my version of the Dante, um, how he is coming along, um, how I created him. Um, and the process that I go through um, where I look at usually just the the artwork um, if I don't have the actual model. If I have the actual model, it's even better. It makes it a little easier. But, you know, where you just go through the artwork, you find all of the key features that you want to go for. Uh, the buckle, the gun, the, you know, every, you, you're looking for those key features. And then look through all their stuff and try to come up with the closest representation of that. Be okay with getting a couple different versions. Use your blue tack. Dry fit them together. Um, see if, if you like it. If you do, go on to the next step. With this guy, he is the named character. And I don't have a Blood Angels Codex. So I don't know if he has different weapon options. So I don't know if there's gonna be a point in magnetizing his arms or not. I'll probably do it anyway, just to make it easier for sub-assembly and, and 
and sub and printing a uh, painting. Um, additionally, he has a good bit of stuff like on his back and whatever. So I might even do that with the jump pack. Cause I think I may have even seen some where he does have the full on wings and everything. So I might make a second backpack version where it's got this type of wings. Um, so that might be cool as, as a, uh, as a potential alternate back kind of for this guy. Um, again, I just have to look through the lore a little bit more, look through the imagery, um, to see if that version of him is out there, if it's known. Um, and then if it is, I, I'm definitely going to go that route as well. Uh, so he has multiple different types of backpacks. I think that's going to be extremely cool. Uh, for this, I have the, 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 the extremely large base. I probably won't, I'll probably only go with the 40. Um, when I, uh, uh, go with the final model. Um, but, uh, but just for here, just you, while you're working with it, I wanted a nice base, uh, to help keep it steady. Um, but I will probably shrink that down in the final product. So that is him. That is how I go about, uh, kit bashing a character. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little something and I'll see you in part three. Bye.